Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. Woo! This fall, the Disney Bundle has all the action. Holy smokes! Watch live NFL and college football games on ESPN Plus. On Disney Plus, there's Loki Season 2. War is on its way. And Ahsoka. Buckle up. And on Hulu, you can watch The Boogeyman and Welcome to Rexa. Oh my God, the expectation. All of these and more streaming this fall with a Disney Bundle. Blackouts and restrictions apply. 18 plus only. Access content from each service separately. Offer valid for eligible subscribers only. Terms apply. The Damian Lillard madness is over. He is going to the Milwaukee Bucks, not the Miami Heat, but he's still going to a great situation where he can win a championship. I am so relieved. I know Craig Burnback, my partner here on the Blazer Focus podcast, is also relieved, but I, Aaron Fentress, cover the Portland Trail Blazers. They've ruined my summer with this madness, and I'm looking forward to training camp now for the first time because Dame's not going to be there. they got some good young players to work with. I'm a little bit excited, but mostly I'm just happy the national nightmare is over. Damian Lillard to the Milwaukee Bucks in a three player, excuse me, three team trade that includes DeAndre Ayton coming from the Suns to the Blazers for use of Nurkic and not so little. We're gonna break it all down every which way but loose. But first things first, Craig. Yeah. How are you? And are you shocked by this? Are you pleased by this? Where are you right now? Real quick. So I'm not shocked by this. I'm going to take a little <laughs> victory lap. Like I, 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 Oh, take the victory I've lap. I've just been the whole time <laughs> I've been saying like, what's going to happen is Damon Lowe is going to get traded before training camp, definitely before the first game. And he's going to go to a contender and a team that he agrees to go to. And that's exactly what happened. I think everyone's a winner here. I will say the fact that he could go to the Bucks, the fact the Bucks could work out a trade to get Damian Lillard, that's amazing to me. If if the Bucks were a, a team that everyone was talking about, I would have said that's the best situation. He's the best pick and roll point guard in the NBA. Giannis is Giannis, like that dude has been pick and rolling with people that have no no pick and roll ability like Dame. It's going to be amazing, and the Blazers. You know what? Joe Cronin and the Blazers get what they want. For some reason, they really didn't want to send him to Miami. They get, <laughs> they don't. They get a center that I don't love, but he's young. Um, today's a good day. It's a sad day, though. I just want to stop for a moment. It's sad. Damon Lillard was a superstar. Damon Lillard was everything you could have asked for in a superstar for Portland, and now he's gone. And that that's yeah. that stinks, man. I mean. Um, I feel lucky to have covered him in 20 some odd years covering sports. Best superstar I've ever covered. On the court, off the court, just just did everything right. And uh, he's gone. But I'm happy for him. Situation's great. And I'm happy for you because your brain, your head, your stress, you couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Had to be over. Were you shocked? Ruined my summer. Well, I shocked it got done. That, no, or shocked the that, it was that it was the Bucks. Okay, so we did a podcast last week, and I told you on that podcast that I was hearing from people that something was going to happen between camp, and it didn't look like it probably was going to be Miami, right? So you start hearing about Toronto, you start hearing about Chicago. I just didn't understand those. It's my understanding that Dane's camp fought like hell to keep him out of Toronto. Chicago didn't make any sense. No. Send him to a place where you're not going to win at all. I just think Dane would have fought that tooth and nail. He's not going to waste the last couple of year, years of his career playing for another mediocre team. He was just staying in Portland. That was going to be the end all for him. Um, so the Bucks were definitely on the list, but I just didn't understand what the Bucks could give, especially when you're trying to compare it to what was available through Miami. So in that regard, I'm a little shocked. Now, I also had conversations over the weekend about the Aiton to Phoenix, excuse me, the Aiton to Portland thing for Nurkic. Now, we talked – did we talk last week about that on the podcast about the, the report out of Phoenix? I don't know if we got there, but it was I out remember there. Writing about it. it was out there. Anyway, but like they, so, so, someone in Phoenix was claiming that a trade was imminent for Dame, 24, 48 hours. Obviously, it's been longer than that, but it did happen. And he was talking about Aiton to, to Phoenix. I was told that that deal was separate from a Blazers deal, from a Glitter deal, sorry. And that it still kind of is in a way, unless you think Grayson Allen is this big, giant piece that had to be in it. Um, but when we talk more about the deal, we can get into get more into that. So the only surprise was that really that they accepted what they accepted from Milwaukee for Dame, because I don't think they got a ton from Milwaukee. Basically, you got Holiday, the first, 
two swaps and Allen, and then you threw Allen down to Phoenix. But anyway, so yeah, I mean, not shocked something happened. Not shocked it wasn't Miami. A little surprised it was the Bucks because you were hearing so much about Toronto. So I kept thinking that it was going to be Toronto or Miami, and Miami didn't get back in it. And so here we are. So you know, again, so just Drew, exactly you can't. You said, you, yes. We, we got to mention Drew Holiday's in the deal because this this thing's not done yet. You know what I mean? Drew Holiday. Right, and right. He, and he, yeah, we're going to get to that. That's a really good player. So it's not just that. So when I look at the deal, at first glance, you're like, whoa. And, of course, you just picked up another 33-year-old point guard who makes a lot of money who's not as good as Damian Lillard. And then you're like, oh, well, obviously they're going to turn that into something else. And my guess, it'll either be a really good young player, which I, but more likely picks, and maybe another first-round pick with contingencies there. So – Right. Okay. That's segueing into what I was going to get to next. So you look at the deal in totality. Obviously, Holiday is unfit. You don't need another guard. You're going to try and flip him. So for me, the trade hinges on two things in terms of its success for Portland. One, can you somehow figure out the tap into DeAndre Ayton? And to me, there are so many red flags. I cannot believe how many Blazers fans are out there going, oh my God, we got DeAndre Ayton. Like, this is some great get. This is not a great get. This is, this is a reclamation project. This is, this is an issue, and you're hypocritical if you don't like Nurkic, but you love Aiden, because they're both inconsistent bigs who are good. They're better than average, but people are crying about Nurkic's contract. Aiden's is twice as much. Yes. That's one. And then two, it's what you turn Holiday in, because if you – people are trying to act like they traded Dame for Holiday, and they're going to flip Holiday, and they got Aiden. You no, know, you also traded Nurkic, Little, Keon Johnson, and Grayson Allen, the asset, went down to Phoenix. So you gave up your starting center and a backup forward to get this guy. To me, unless they get something great for Holiday, I don't think it's going to be that great of a deal, especially when you talked about yep. Cronin wanting to get a star-level trade, and everyone was frowning at what Miami offered, which apparently the – you know, one of the things you could have got from Miami were four firsts after turning Hero into a first, maybe two of the small forwards they have or young forwards they have, and then some picks. So I don't feel like this is an automatic win at all. I, I think there's so many things that have to happen before I consider this a win. I, I agree with that. The only thing I'll say is that uh, the win for some reason is that you didn't trade him to Miami. Like somehow there's a victory lap for that. <laughs> I don't understand that. Um, but th- this is what I'll say. Um, potentially. Because the, the the one draft pick, this is about 2026, you know, in the, at at best. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I don't feel it's a great day for a Blazers because you you really are now back in hope mode. You know, all hope mode uh, because you didn't get a ton of picks. Because a ton of picks, like to me, the Miami thing was all about get the assets and then move them possibly. Right. And you had more flexibility. Right. This one, it really relies on whether or not Aiton, who's still young was the first overall draft pick obviously has potential, but the red flags are huge. Um, so yes, now you're in hope mode again. If Aiton turns into, you know, uh, an all-star or right below all-star or just a consistently good player uh, at that money, it's good. And you resign him and you keep him and he, his age works with your young players. If he does what he did in Phoenix, Phoenix dumped this salary. Let's be clear. They wanted him out. Mm-hmm. They took a, they took a player with less potential and, uh, and not as good um, to just to, to move off that money. So here's the thing. Aiden can dunk. Nurkic can't. Uh, so there's that, you know, like, and I like, I, I quick, quick stat, quick stat, Aiden, five feet and in 77% last year, Nurk, it's 60.9. And it's one of the more frustrating things, frustrating things about Nurk is, are all the little bunnies that he Can't misses. Not, You're like, dude, not, what are you not. doing? But Aiden's flushing he it. And he's finishing it around the rim. So that, you know, I'm thankful. I don't have, to, I like Nurk. So good guy. Exactly. I, I wish him the best. He might win a ring, but it was frustrating watching him miss shots within five feet and and so and then what do what do they do what does drew holiday end up being drew holiday is a really good player i mean he's a he's a 19 point scorer on a team where he's the third uh scorer and just a a fantastic defender and a leader and just a solid solid player that people are gonna want my what i want more than anything right now is for him to go to the miami heat like and that's a real potential oh my god 
Yeah, so, so, two first and uh, one of the forwards. Done. That'd be perfect. And Duncan Robinson, the salary match or whatever. And they'll go back, yeah. and then they're going to play Milwaukee in the finals, right? And it'll be, in the in the Eastern right. Conference Finals, it's going to be it's going to be delicious, right? That's what I want. I want Drew Holiday going to the Heat. I want the Heat and the Bucks to have a rematch in the Conference Finals, and uh, I'll, I'll be rooting for Lillard. But I just think um, saying that the the Heat are huge losers doesn't make sense to me. Uh, but yeah, that that the problem with this trade for me is you are again really in hope mode uh, because if Aiton ends up stinking, uh, this is a bad trade. You know, it it just is because you you went and got yourself uh, a player that you're now depending on, uh, and it's a player that has red flags and that's making thirty million bucks. So, um, but I also understand why they did it, and you've got to move on, and you gave you're rolling the dice here. With there's a reason why he was picked first overall. He had some great moments in his career. You know, it's not like this guy's mm-hmm. been a dud, um, and he he's being un- unloaded by a team that is going to play um, at a, in a way that doesn't fit his game really. Right? He he needs to score to be an effective player, and they do not need him to score <laughs> because these other dudes are you know that that. KD is pretty darn good at that. You know, they Booker's pretty darn good at that. So for Nurkic, it, it, it makes sense for them. Hey, Nurk, can you just rebound, please? And uh, if, if you could dunk, that'd be nice. But if you could rebound, set some really good picks, and he's he's a decent defender at the rim when that's what his responsibilities are. Um, and then, you know, Aiton gets to score 20 a game. You know, like if he's good, he's going to score 20 a game. Aaron, like there's just, there's no way he's going to play 34, 30, you know, minutes a game. If he doesn't get in foul trouble, everybody over six ten who plays 34 minutes gets 10 rebounds. It's kind of, it kind of happens and they're going to be, you know, hopefully Scoot's going to be throwing some alley-oops to this guy and he'll be getting 20 points and it'll be fun as they lose, you know, 56 games. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how many times in NBA history has a team traded its number one overall pick within five years of, of drafting him, and that turned out well for the team that got him? Yeah, it's not you, <laughs> off the top of my head. This is off the top of my head. I haven't done any massive research, but that only happens if the guy didn't work out. Of course, it doesn't happen, or or the guy contract impasse yeah. or whatever. You know, you can have that happen, but that's not the case here. Um, so that's red flag number one. Red flag number two. For whatever reason, he couldn't find the motivation he needed to step up and be an impact player with a championship caliber team that had Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant. That's red flag number two. Where is he? Who's motivating him on this team? 19 year old Scoot Henderson, Ant, Sharp, unassuming Jeremy Grant. The only guy who might be able to get through to him might be Chauncey. So the question is, can Chauncey Billups get more out of Aiton than Monty Williams could? Maybe different styles of coaching could make it work. Who knows? Whatever. Maybe maybe no pressure because they're not supposed to win. Helps Aiton so not have to deal with being the number one pick, not have to deal with being a, a, a big piece of a championship puzzle. He can just go in the season knowing that if they go 500, oh boy. And he's 20 and 10, he's probably going to be loved. Uh, but that's a red flag. So I just... I hope it works out for Portland. I hope it works out for Aiton. But man, it's they were willing to dump this guy to move his contract. He makes twice as much as Nurkic for Nurkic, Nasir, and Grace Nella. Now, to be fair, with the big contracts they had, they need depth. So this gives you depth because now you've got three guys you can play as opposed to one, especially when that one is someone you don't necessarily want to play anymore. So there is a huge positive there. For Phoenix, but you know, if if DeAndre Ayton is in Portland, what he was the last two years, Portland fans are going to be disappointed and they're going to be upset. And I remember last spring just floating Ayton's name out there, and people did not react very kindly to the idea because everyone just saw how he played against yep. Denver when he basically disappeared in that series. Um, interestingly, they won the two games where he only I think had four points in, but he still did not play very well in that series. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see, man. I mean, it's intriguing. It's going to be fascinating to watch. I'm actually kind of pumped up now to cover the season just because there's a lot of intrigue going on. Um, then bef- I mean, I think they're going to lose, but I don't think they're going to lose without, you know, some intrigue. Uh, so anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens there, but I'm not sold. 
I'm not destroying it. I'm not saying it's not going to work. Just got to prove no, it. No, they roll, like I said, you're in hope mode again. You're not in mode where you're waiting to see what what your guys are and then make moves. If Aiton, uh, if Aiton falls flat, uh, this trade's not good. But I get – I understand it because I didn't see – it wasn't like you were going to get from the other, like Toronto wasn't going to give you Siakam. And I'd never believed Scotty Barnes. Like why would Toronto have done that? Like I never, of course, if you could have gotten Scotty Barnes, that would have been better, but um, I didn't see that happening. So you were going to get, um, you know, you were going to get a power forward that you kind of knew what you were getting uh, from Toronto. So to me, you roll the dice. Um, they obviously have seen things, talk to people, but again, like the expectation, as you said, is way different. There's going to be no pressure to win, you know, in the playoffs. And the only thing that matters to the Suns is a championship. And last year right. he didn't, he couldn't help them do that. Uh, oh. But they moved, they moved past him while he was there. You know what I mean? They made moves that they said, okay, we have a different idea how we're going to win a championship and it's not going to be with Aiton. So Everyone knew that they wanted to move Aiton. So while I agree with you that if you're a first overall pick and you're being moved at this time in your career, it's it's not great. Uh, but I do uh, I see the potential that it could work out. I don't love what I see. The parts that I don't like about Aiton is where he just shut down, and you, you know there's video of him looking at the rim, watching four guys jump up and get it. Um, mm. Not. Not like that didn't happen with Yusuf, you know? So uh, that's the part that worries me <laughs> is that it's not, it's a head game thing. Um, but th right. those things might be able to be fixed. Uh, but I just, look, to me, I get what they, they had to trade him. So, and, and, and what matters um, right now for the Blazers is to move into the Scoot Henderson mode, right? And see what they have there. Uh, and see what they have with Sharp, and then decide something with Simons. This, and th while you have eight in there, like I said, I don't see how he doesn't score twenty and how he doesn't get twenty and ten. Like as long as he's good enough oh, to play yeah, on the damn he court, he's going to get twenty and ten, and they might lose. Um, but I, I, I get, I get why they did it. Um, but to me, the whole thing comes down to like, holy crap, David Lillard got to go play with the Bucks. Like, I, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, this is perfect. So, so let's, let's talk about that. Okay. So there's a lot of people on Twitter talking about, I'm so glad good, good one's the loser in this. And I'm so glad oh, good one, good one, one, good one, that. And then people are coming at me just saying, it's just some, such ridiculous, ignorant nonsense. I just, our educational system is broken. <laughs> it's critical thinking, critical, no, critical thinking skills do not exist. People just assume things. They, they have, you have no people have no idea how many conversations I have about this with so many different people, and then what I can report and what I can't report, and all these different things, and then it just they, it's just bizarre the way people think. But anyway, so Damian Lillard wanted Miami, not Aaron Goodwin. Damian Lillard wanted Miami. Aaron Goodwin's job is to try and get Damian Lillard where he wants to go. That's his, that's his job. <laughs> and that was Miami. So when the Blazers were talking about, we're going to try and get a star level deal and we're going to shop you around the league, the reaction was, oh, wait, no, you're not. We're demanding Miami now. And we're going to tell other teams not to trade for him. Obviously, nothing happened over the summer. We get, you know, they, people get back into the mode a couple of weeks ago. They're starting to make calls, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a standoff between Miami. Miami has put out, a minor offer. They want the Blazers to tell them what they want. The Blazers are saying, we want everything, which isn't an answer. It's stupid because you're not going to get everything. They didn't get everything in this deal. They weren't going to get everything from Miami. So that was just dumb. That wasn't an answer. But their thing was like, we're not going to tell you exactly what we want because we want you to come to the table first with something better. So there was this standoff between the two sides. And all of this is according to multiple sources. And I talked to Miami reporters as well, to find out what they're hearing. And just we, we sort of cross things back and forth. But this is what was going on according to several NBA sources. And so there was a standoff there. So Portland went and looked elsewhere, which is 
fine. Go look elsewhere. If you find a much better deal and you go to Miami and Miami says, we're not going to match that, then it's on Damon Goodwin to go to Miami and say, what are you doing? You got to match this or you're not going to get me. And if they don't, then yeah, by all means, trade them somewhere else. I've been saying this for three months. But that's not even what happened. They never really got to there. What happened was Portland refused to talk to Miami, period. Like there was just no interest whatsoever in talking to Miami for a myriad of reasons. And that's fine, but it was kind of clogging things up and creating a lot of of um, you know, angst between the two sides in this, and things were getting kind of ugly. So, so I talked to Goodwin. He confirmed this on the record, and Mark Spears has put this out that he went to Lillard and said, "Look, Portland's not talking to Miami. I think I can probably get you to the Bucks." And Lillard agreed that he would accept that. So Goodwin made calls to try and get that. Rolling, but at the end of the day, Portland didn't simply send Damien where he didn't want to go or refused to go, right? And then now he's just got to suck it up. Damien agreed in the end that he would accept going to the Bucks, and that's how things got rolling and got going. So, as you and I, you and I have said this all summer too, as we were in agreement, even when I was reporting early in the summer that I was hearing that they might not show. You and I would talk about it and be like, eh, I mean, but would he really not show to Boston? Would he really not show to Philadelphia or Milwaukee? I believe he wouldn't show to Utah. I believe he wouldn't show to Chicago. If he did show, he would show and sort of skateboard th through 24 and 8. You could put up 24 and 8 and not play winning basketball if you're a talented basketball player. And it would have been a nightmare for that franchise. But he agreed to go to the Bucks, which I – always believed he probably like how could you say no to Giannis? Of like, course he like, did. Of course he did. You just you just said you just talked about how great Giannis is and he's a great dude. Could you imagine walking into Milwaukee and be like, yo, yo, Giannis man, I don't want to play for you and then dropping a rap album dissing Giannis. Like it just wasn't gonna happen because Giannis is the perfect person for him to play for. It's literally perfect. They are going to be a nightmare. Amazing for everyone in the league. And they still have other dudes around them who are dogs. That's why they won 58 games last year. This is this is a great spot for him. Sorry, Miami. But anyway, the point is that at the end of the day, Dame agreed to go to the Bucks. Good ones behind the scenes helping make this work work out. And, they, and Portland ultimately got what they feel good about. It's a win-win-win for everybody. And we can all... Put it behind. Let, let me be clear. I said the whole time they were never that Damian Lillard was never going to get traded anywhere that he didn't agree to go to. No one was going to make that trade. Right. So as soon as I saw that right. it was the Bucks, I was like, oh, he agreed to go. And of course he did. He agreed to go. I mean, Bucks. like I, I said that all along. He, no one's trading for Damian Lillard to have him mad. And when they brought up the Ka Kawhi thing, I was like, Kawhi said eventually said yes because he was going to be a free agent and he won a title and then went to the Clippers where he wanted to go. Right. Damian Lillard did not have that right. option. So that was never going to happen in my mind, and it didn't. And and let us let me be clear about the job. Like you mentioned it, the job of the agent is get to the player where he wants to go because that's it. He works for the player. But right. he's also supposed to do the best. He can't control everything. It's like you hire right. a real estate agent to buy a house, but you can't get the agent to buy the house for $20,000 less than somebody else offers. Like there's only a limit. So their job is then to find you another house that you like enough at the, what you can pay. So what he, and that's what it is. It's the same thing. Real estate agent. That's the job of the agent. The agent is also supposed to say crazy stuff. So you don't have to, so you can right. get, and, and eventually everything you say, you tell them why. And when the strategy doesn't work, then you're a bad agent. This agent got him into a better basketball situation. So how he's a loser here, the rest of the players are like, oh, you got Dame to Milwaukee? I don't think they're like, oh, that guy sucks. He got him to play with the best player on the planet on a team that won 58 games. Exactly. And he's going to win a championship. Exactly. And oh my God, he fits it perfect. He's a he's a scoring point guard. What couldn't they do last year when they needed? Because, you know, they lost Chris Middleton in All-Star, by the way, at one point, And they couldn't score. Uh, they didn't have enough options to score. What does Damian Lillard do? Oh, my God, he does that. What does Damian do Lillard do not well? Defense. Oh, my goodness. Giannis is the best defensive player in the league. And, oh, oh, if he's not, this big dude behind him named Brooke Lopez is pretty damn good. at. And so everyone's like, he can't stop. They're going, 70, they're going 72 and 10, bro. I'm just saying, they can't. 
<laughs> the truth, Dame can't stop ball. You're right. He can't stop ball. So guess what? Giannis and Brooke are right by, by the rib. He, right they can stop him. ball. And then they got Robin Lopez now. He can stop. He just tackles people. I'm just saying, like, you're telling me an agent did a terrible job because he didn't get him to the team that wouldn't that the that the Blazers wouldn't speak to and instead got him to the best option for him. I just think that's crazy. And I'm super it's sorry. asinine. And go ahead. Go I'm ahead. Just, I, I, yeah, sorry. For what I wanted for Dame, which was to win a championship in Portland. Once that was over, which I said the moment they drafted Scoot Anderson, it was over. He was gone. To me, this gives Dame everything he, he he's ever wanted. Giannis yeah. is the best player he's ever played. Other than the beast. No, he, okay, we can't say everything. He wanted South Beach. Okay, no, no, no. He no. did want no, that. I, but, I'm a, I'm t- but basketball-wise, I'm yes. going to take that. I'm going to talk about what he's been saying since day one of his career. Yeah. Which is he wanted a chance to win a championship, and he wanted to play right. with upgraded talent. I'm going to take the the Miami thing off the plate I'm just, and, and say, okay, he didn't get that. But he can't complain is what I'm saying, That what the Blazers did. The Blazers did yeah, him 100%. right. They didn't. They didn't screw him. They traded him. They didn't him. send him to Chicago. They didn't send him to – Or even try. Um, we don't know what they tried. Indiana, in the end, or, he lands in a situation talk to him, where man. if he doesn't win a championship with this team, two thing, one of two things have happened. One, injuries you can't control. He gets hurt. Giannis gets hurt. Middleton gets hurt again. Or he doesn't do – he underperforms. He doesn't do what you need to win a championship because this roster is set – to win a championship if healthy. There is no reason why they can't win a championship. So right. to me, that's what someone threw a tweet at me. Someone threw one of my old tweets at me saying, Well, you said this, and it had me saying that it would be, you know, basically career suicide for a GM to trade for a disgruntled 33 year old point guard making $260 million who doesn't want to play for you. And I'm like, but he's agreed to play there. That's not what happened. <laughs> that's, that's the that's only what point here. Yeah, he's agreed to play for the Bucks at the end of the day, and his agent helped make the Bucks deal happen. His agent didn't necessarily. His agent only wanted him in Miami because that's where Dame wanted yes. to go. His job it was never. I don't want him in Miami. It was Dame doesn't want to play in such and such. So he got Dame to to say, "Okay, I'll play for the Bucks," and then that opened the idea of him going there and then the bucks got more involved and they were able to complete a deal knowing that Dane would show up and be happy. How hard do you think that conversation that was? was? How hard was that convincing had to be? I don't think it had well, to be no, that I, no, I th- Well, I no, I think so because Dane was, but Dane was pretty serious about the Miami thing. Yes. But I think at the end of the day, when you, when you realize that this team is just not going to play ball and the other, the other option out there, is it's I mean um, the Heat did beat Miami in the playoffs. I mean, beat Miami Milwaukee, yes. Seed, you know, there's that. Yes. But huh? Yeah. What you I said, said they, the Heat beat Miami, which you know. Oh, sorry, he beat, beat Milwaukee. Sorry, the M, you know, the whole M thing threw me off. Anyway, so yeah, I just I just can't believe that. And I've said this numerous times. At the end of the day, if he got sent to somewhere like the Bucks to play with Giannis, he wouldn't go. Okay, I'll play with the Bucks, <laughs> and that's what happened. Okay, so that's. Let's get to this part. What do the Blazers have to get for Drew Holiday to make this a truly good deal for them? Because like I said, at the, they could have made the Aiton trade, I believe, and I was told it was discussed without the Lillard component. That, that they could have been two things. I mean, they, I even tweeted out today. Maybe they just trade for Aiton and see if Dame will stay. So what do they need to get for Holiday to make that really pop? Because right now it's a redundant guard, one first and two swaps. And then you sent Grayson Allen, you know, a replaceable player in the, in the deal to get Aiton, but you gave up Nurkic, Little, and you took back a huge contract. What do they need to get for Holiday to make this deal really, really smoking for them? Uh, two firsts or a first and a, another young player that, you know, that that fits. That fits right in. And I don't, again, I don't care what position. I really don't care. Like if he, if he's redundant, if it's a young player, um, again, they're not winning now. So get assets, get a young player. If you end up with two, two, you know, two shooting guards that are fantastic and they're both, you know, 23 or under, then you turn that into something. So I'm just saying like two firsts um, or a first and, you know, basically a first round talent that's already in the league, um, which some of these deals that were out there were talking about, 
you know, first round, you know, picks. Not not the second round pick that they got in this trade. You know, that that to me is you got to fill spots and you got to fill money. Um, so that's what I think that that they need to, you know, to get to make it, um, you know, a solid deal. I, I, just, I don't think I'm not going to be like, this is the greatest deal ever. I mean, unless Aiton turns out to be a great player and then it's a great deal. I mean, but yes, I mean, is that, that your ballpark too? I got, I got, yeah. So, I, so to me, like the Miami thing is almost too perfect. It's like, we've already discussed pieces a little bit. Yep. You've got a couple of small, a couple of young fours. I, we like, you got some picks. Um, you need a point guard and we're, we can send you one who shot as well. His shooting, his shooting numbers were better than Lillard's last season. He's a shoot as many shots and he's a way better defender. So why would Miami be interested in that kind of guy? He kind of fits what they want to be defensively anyway. Then you got Holiday and Butler playing D together, with backed up by ba- like to me. You shift this thing to Miami and say, "Yo, give us salary match and two first, or a first and a swap, or one of your small forwards in a first, or let's work something out." If you were willing to give up whatever you're willing to give up for Dan, give us half that for Holiday. So. I, to me, that almost makes too good a sense. The other thing is my Chicago Bulls, who were in discussions about Lillard, they're reeling still from the Lonzo Ball injury. When they have Ball rolling early, they look like a really good team. Ball's been out now for almost two years. They, they're, they're, It just kills them. If they can add Drew Holiday somehow and start him in the backcourt with Levine, all of a sudden they become a playoff team. So why wouldn't the Bulls, who are interested in Dame, be willing any lesser to do a lesser trade for Holiday. Again, I don't know what exactly. Like, you don't want to take DeRozan, I don't think. Um, or maybe you do. Maybe you take DeRozan in his expiring contract and a first or something else in Patrick Williams and a first or, or what have you or something there. But to me, that's a good trade partner as well. So I would go back to Toronto as well. <laughs> Toronto needs a point guard. And you were talking to them about Dame. So to me, there's three teams right there you talked to about Dame. I go back to all three of those teams with Drew Holiday and say, let the bidding begin. And don't any of you try and balk or be salty because you all need a point guard and we all know it. So let's just get it done. And he's a really good player. He's a really good player, Drew Holiday. Yeah, I mean, he's awesome. He is, he, he's, he's a, a plug in, adult. He's a plug and play yep. point guard. I mean, I, I, I'm with you on all three of those. Um, and then it's solid. Uh, and you hope for the Aiton thing. Um, and then you're closer to what, cause that's the thing. Like, you know, people are, there, there's two sides when you look on, you know, with crazy reactions, the one side that say, this is such a better deal. And then others say that it's, it's so much worse to me. No, it's in the ballpark. You know, it's a little bit different because you went with Aiton, uh, you know, rather than a, you know, young guard or young forward, um, but you also gave up Nurkic and other pieces. You know, it's not like, look, we we debated on whether or not Keon Johnson were going to be a, like a real good player. Like, let's not forget back, you know, back in the, the Blazers losing 11 in a row. Like, I like what Keon did. You know, I was on that bandwagon. Keon, you can find Keon my stepping tweets. up. You can find my tweets that I like what Keon yeah. brings. So, it's you know, that's a first round. And we were saying, like, they got a first round draft pick when they, when they got him. So, it's not like they – and Little – at this time last year, we were talking about Nasir Little as a starting three that, you know, when he signed his contract, that it was going to be the steal of the century because he was going to be your starting, you know, small forward for, you know, the next five years. And now you just gave him up and he's not a bat. If healthy, we know Nasir Little can be a very solid NBA basketball player. So you didn't give up nothing uh, along. uh, You didn't just give up Lillard. I mean, you gave up your starting center. You gave up your potential starting small forward at one point and a piece that you got in a trade that you told the world was a first-round talent because he was a first-round pick. So you need to go get right. some stuff. But again, you're also clearing the, you're clearing the plate, right? I mean, you, that, that, there is something to that. You had to trade Damian Lillard and you had to, to you know, clear the runway uh, for your young talent including Scoot Henderson. And now you get to just get behind that train, market the crap out of this young team and hope for 2027. You know, like that's, that's where you are. Um, And that's frustrating. And that's the part where I'm like, it's not, this isn't a great day for the Blazers. You know, this is, this kind of (laughs) sucks. 
you know, because you, you're just restarting again and you didn't do anything. Now, Damon Lillard gave you some magical moments and you <clears> should thank him for that. But you didn't win a title. You had one run, run to the Western Conference Finals that didn't even feel real. And maybe people disagree with me, but to me it was like, holy crap, look at that. But no one thought they were going to win the championship that year. Uh, and you never surrounded Damian Lillard with any talent uh, after LaMarcus Aldridge left that was at that that level. Um, so that, to me, is a sad thing. And if you're a Blazer fan, you're like – and you're getting old. You're like us. You're in the, you know, you're not your, you're not your twenties anymore. You start counting how many years do I got left to see a championship? I got to wait another three years minimum because you're not going to contend for a title this year. You're not going to contend for a title next year. You're not going to contend for a t- title probably the year after. But maybe uh, that 2027, 2020. You know, you're you're hoping that you've got two all stars that you just re-signed to God what are the contracts going to be then 90 million a year jeez uh, 90 million a month what are you talking about <laughs> Scoot Henderson signs a 5 year 6 billion dollar contract and it's a steal <laughs> it's a steal yeah, he's underpaid and who's the owner that's oh the my goodness who's the owner yeah exactly yeah well yeah that's another thing all right so real quickly so we're going to we're going to uh we'll dedicate a lot of time to a, a another podcast to Dame's legacy for sure. But um, let's, let's talk about this a little bit more before we sign off here. Just how good are the Bucks oh, going to be? Are, are they your favorite in the East now? Like, are they, I, I guess the odds makers have them the number one favorite in, to win the title, right? They're one to four, four to one. I think. Why wouldn't you be? They were my fit. The Bucks were my favorite last year. They won. They, they had 58 wins. You know what I mean? Like they, they right. didn't, they underperformed in the playoffs, but they battled injuries all year. Um, I do not. I I just think it's the perfect fit. I mean, it's a super team now. I mean, they have three all stars right off the bat, and then um, and if Middleton stays healthy, I worry about him because he's just had repetitive injuries. When you watch Giannis play, and not, it, it's just crazy. He's so good. He is so good, and and he has not played um, as much as I I like. Drew Holiday, and you talked about his shooting numbers. The reason why Drew Holiday shot so well is he was buck naked because nobody, you know, is coming out, coming out on him when Giannis is there. And what is Dame going to do right. in that pick and roll situation? When he, had, he and LaMarcus did it, it was brilliant. And LaMarcus picked and popped. Giannis picks and dunks. <laughs> and they beg him to pop. Other teams beg him to shoot the three. So I just I think that this is the perfect fit uh, for the Bucks, and they have to be the favorite in the East because to me they're better than the Celtics. And who else are you going to put up on that? You know that level. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. Um, I, you know, obviously Boston's going to be a threat. Sure. We'll see what Philly does, but Philly's just too dysfunctional right now. They have to do something with Harden. Um, Miami's going to be good. I mean, they made it to the finals this past year. They'll, they'll try and figure out what to do at point guard. You know, if you're Portland, you're not worried about who you trade holiday to in, in the East. So to me, you know, Miami, Toronto, and Chicago, if they want to be in the mix, all three need to be after holiday. And that could be in the, that could end up being really the, the greatest twist in this entire thing is that the Blazers go from having Lillard and dealing with him just wanting to go to one team to having holiday and having all those teams who are interested in Lillard desperately needing a point guard. I, mean, I guess Toronto has shorter, but uh, needing a point guard. And then you have one for them, a veteran one who plays D and can shoot. Like they should be able to get something good out of maybe those three teams. We'll see. Uh, I just want to yeah, be there at the you know, meeting the, the, the Bucks when the fun. Heat and the <laughs> Blazers sit down. Like when Pat Riley's across the table from Cronin and be like, hey, I'd like to talk to you about and, – and I know, you know, Riley's done – done this for so long but it is to me that would be the ultimate irony right like that they, they sit down and they make this trade after kind of you know not being able to even get to a place where they were um having considerable talks about Lillard but um right that's funny to me that just makes me laugh <laughs> okay last very last thing they were going to sign out let's say the Blazers get a legit starting small forward I'll go back to Chicago. There were some reports out there that 
Grady Dick would have been involved in a trade to Portland. He's a small forward out of Kansas, like 13th overall, 13th overall pick, 6'8 okay. guy. He can shoot it. Pretty, you know, pretty solid prospect. He could come in and either Sharp starts at the three and Grady Dick backs him up, or Dick maybe starts at the three, and then you got a Sharp, Simon, Scoot thing at the guards going on there. You know, it doesn't really matter who plays. They're all going to play. But would a group of Simon, Scoot, Sharp, Matisse, Grady Dick, Chris Murray, Grant starting at the four, eight at the five with Moses Brown, Jabari Walker, and whatever else. I might be missing someone. Would that team contend for the play-in? I hope not. <laughs> I mean, if you're a Blazer fan, why do you want that? I mean, I don't understand. But, no, I mean, they're not good. I mean, Grady Dick, look, he he's a sharp shooting six, eight. What if you get Dick and you get the first round pick back? That'd be good. Mm-hmm. But not for, na- not for this year. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is, you know, stink and get a lottery pick, right? Don't, don't. Not get a lottery pick. Why? But if you make it, at least you still have your own pick if you get it back. Yeah, sure. Okay, get it back. But I still would rather not risk it and get – You'd rather have a lottery rather pick. Have a lottery pick because those are the players that are really good in the NBA, not the guys that are Okay, aren't. so forget what you'd rather. I'm just asking, no. would that team have any well, shot? Well, every team is – everyone can be a contender for the play, and it's a losing record. You know, we don't even know how bad it's going to be. If if it – last year was a shock to me how many teams – I say no. You know, underperformed. I agree. It's a no. I'm just saying that oh, yeah, if you can make the no. play in with 35 wins, that's a bad team and you can <laughs> compete for the play in, right? And that's a possibility. If right. everything goes the way. I just think the West is way too deep. Agree. Yeah. I think the West is way too deep. You're still going to be way too young. We're talking about Simons being your veteran wing guard, point guard slash whatever, way older than Scoot, Sharp. And Dick, well, I guess I guess Matisse is a little older. And you got Simon. Grant. Matisse mm-hmm. is going to be a role player off the bench. Grant is, you know, an unassuming veteran guy who's going to score twenty, but only give you five rebounds, but give you some good defense. Ants, or excuse me, Aiden sets. Oh my God, Aiden Ant, that's going to mess me up all year. Aiden, you know, he's got to turn around and one year. That's just a lot to ask for one Aiden. season. So I still think that even if they get something pretty nice for for Drew, unless for Drew Holiday, unless they get someone of his caliber. To start a small forward, then that might change the equation. Like if they got OG, you know, I, now I'm starting thinking you're a playing team. But right now, I'd say no. OG, yes. All right, we're done. By the way, can I just say Thanks one thing? On. I love that you've come around. You've yeah. come around to to the that Grant's not going to get you eight rebounds. Like you come around, you're like, yep, it's it is what it is. He's going to get you five. He's going to get you twenty and five and play solid B. Oh, you could sleep a little tonight. You oh, could yeah. sleep. I'm happy Why, for you, go? sir. Oh, no, I know. I don't have to be checking things all the time. All right, we'll break down the rebounding prowess of one Jeremy Grant during training camp, all right? Thank you very much. Okay, that's it for the Blazer Focused Podcast Trade Edition. Damian Lillard is gone. Sad news for the Blazers faithful, but some pieces that could add to the future. We will be back soon with another podcast, hopefully maybe after they introduce someone like Aiden. That would be cool to see. Uh, please click that subscribe button and give us a positive rating feedback and uh, we'll catch you soon. Thanks.